Hi, welcome to this part. We are covering part 11. And in this part, we will look at questions which are linked with these topics. Needless to say, these are all real certification questions. Please focus on the concepts. And before you go through part 11, you can also go through the previous parts. That's parts 1 to 10. There are several playlists on this channel which will help you with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud certifications. Please subscribe to my channel and like my videos. Let's look at this question. So who are the players here? Stock market monitoring application, like maybe Zerodar or FivePassive.com. And if you are in US, maybe Robinhood, See, these applications use real-time streaming heavily. So here we are using Kinesis Streams. Now what the problem is, stream is not keeping up with the incoming data, like the speed of incoming data is too high. And what step Kinesis needs to do to handle peak hour traffic? Like in India, 9.15 to 9.45 is peak. Like most of them try to make money that time. A high volatility. Okay, chances of losing money is also high, but chances of making money is also high. Similarly, when the Europe stock market opens up, maybe at 1.30 p.m. in India or 2 p.m. in India, depending upon the daylight saving that Europe follows. So that is the time as well. You will see a lot of movement in the stock prices. So what will you do out of these four options to handle peak hour streaming requests? First is use KPL for indistinct data. See, whether you consume the data through some other services or KPL, it is not going to change your world. When you when we say stream, stream is like a pipe between these two entities. There is a pipe, okay? If these are two buildings and there is a pipe and people say, hey, you know what? I am sending two liters of water per second. But this guy here does not receive two liter. So what is wrong? Obviously, there is some clogging here in the pipe. You have to fix the pipe. Similarly here, you will fix the pipe by increasing the shard count of the pipe. You will increase the shard count so that the pipe now becomes big. So it becomes big like this, man, like this. This is the whole pipe. Now water can flow in and this will solve your peak hour traffic problem. Think from layman perspective, it will always be interesting to solve these questions. Okay, B says reduce the data retention period to allow more data ingestion using decreased stream retention period. So if you decrease the data retention period, so if the water is not flowing, that the water will go away. Do you want that to lose that water? No, boss, you don't want to lose the data. And last one says, ingest multiple records into the stream in a single call. See, boss, whether you in one go, you put one liter of water or you put one liter. If you have a bucket of one liter and keep putting one liter twice, thrice, or if you have a bucket of five liters and put five liter in one go, that's not going to change the world. The clock is here. Shit is stuck here, man. You have to clear the pipe. So this is the final answer. Let's look at this question. So you have an application and you have a database common and this database is DynamoDB. And when this application tries to access this data, it gets provision throughput exceed errors and they get this errors many times a day. Something is bad, man and many times a day for a duration of 15 seconds. What should be done with this exception? You have four options. The first one says, create a global secondary index for the table to help with additional requests, okay? You know why this error happens? So sometimes you get this error because, you know, when you have provisioned a table, you have given a read and write capacity in DynamoDB, Sometimes that gets exceeded. Okay, so if you are constantly sending requests every 15 seconds, and if you're getting this error, then wait for some time. Have patience, man. Do some yoga. Have patience. Wait for some time, and then put your request. 
what is this process called doing yoga having patience doing yoga doing yoga doing yoga to calm yourself in dynamo db world it's called exponential back off back off as a name says back off do not come and disturb me every 15 seconds back off come after some time so when i'm trying to disturb you and you're not responding that means i have to retry right because my uh my attempt to disturb you failed so i have to retry if i retry you every five seconds ten seconds you will get you know in a really bad mood if i retry after one minute you will be still okay to respond so that's what exponential back off does so this is my answer she says immediately retry the failed read request this will not work boss already we are selling that you are already telling me you are showing me do not disturb board this provision throughput exceeded is do not disturb board and then you are saying the moment you see that do not disturb mode you again disturb that guy <laughs> so c is stupid and then d says use dynamo db update item api to increase the provision throughput capacity of the table see update item you can update any of the fields in the table and etc that i don't think it will help you increase the provision throughput capacity for that you will have to increase the uh, read units and the write units okay so this is a wrong option so this is my final answer so this one before code is released into production environment the release process workflow of an application needs human review you want to review it before it goes to production what is the most effective way think of a scenario you are a developer you have developed the code then it goes into testing environments there might be different levels of testing unit testing system integration testing performance testing unit testing you have to do as a developer but other testing there are different quality assurance teams who do that now doing that there has to be a review before the code finally hits production because if you don't do that you might mess up the production environment and that's why you want to do it but what is the most cost effective method to do it there are four options the first one says use multiple pipelines to allow approvals using one pipeline or five pipelines will not help you you want to introduce an approval process this will not help you with that second says use an approval action in a stage so when you approve or reject so this is an approval action you can include and this looks correct because you can add this in a stage and if your approval action fails you should not deploy that code so this looks correct what does approval or human review what what does approval add in the value from a value perspective what it means is that approval through an authorized entity it adds more governance to the code that you are deploying in production and that's a very important step you all in your current projects if you are working you should Im implement this review process c says disable that stage transition to allow manual approval you should not disable boss you should everything should be a part of action if you are using code pipeline and if you are using dev ops and etc then the transition should happen through the stages you should not disable any stage for manual approvals and disable the stage prior to deployment stage there is no disablement needed you just have to add an extra stage that is the approval action stage if you add approval action in a stage that will help you out so this is my final answer please hit the subscribe and the like button it takes a lot of effort to put in these contents free of cost this brings us to the end of part 11 please do note that there are several playlists which will help you with aws azure and gcp cloud certifications on this channel please go through those playlists focus on the concepts these are all real real certification questions let us recap what we covered in this part See you in the next part.